very good morning everyone in this course uh, watershed hydrology uh, today we will be discussing uh, runoff runoff as you know is one of the most important component of hydrology and one of the most and also in this course this will be the last portion but still it is a very big big uh, we have to cover many things in this runoff this runoff itself cover 50% of this course water watershed hydrology talking about runoff as we all know we are discussing as well previously that runoff is that portion of rainfall which flows as overland as subsurface flow and reaches the channel and goes as waste so this runoff uh, in any soil and water conservation measures this uh, runoff we try to check the runoff earlier we were discussing about uh, rainfall and its measurement then we also discussed about abstraction losses in which we discussed about the interception losses depression storage uh, then infiltration after all this uh, requirements are met once rain falls first it will be intercepted by the vegetation then the, the depressions which are there on the land surface that will be filled at the same simultaneously there would be evaporation as well as transpiration from land surface as well as from vegetation then once the depression is filled your evaporation transpiration uh, requirements are fulfilled and infiltration also takes place but still when if rainfall continues at a rate higher than the infiltration rate of the soil then rainfall flow flows as overland flow into some rivulets or some rivers or some big nalas so this runoff there are many components of the runoff the overland flow is one of the major component beside that there is a base full flow as well earlier we have studied in infiltration indices we have separated the runoff uh, the total rainfall or the runoff from the abstraction of this infiltrations through phi index or w index any other methods were there we will be discussing in more details in this chapter then it, uh, this rainfall as direct as well as subsurface uh, runoff and base flow which is this stream if we see uh, the our uh, topo uh, topography it's something like you no know, there will be small depressions undulations at some places this is our uh, you know land surface right and this is our you know hard impervious impervious layer and above which there would be or which there would be a, a ground water table water table this is your water table and when rain falls on the land surface first it is obstructed by the vegetations this process we call it interception right then at the same time there would be evaporation from the land surface evapotranspiration from the vegetation evaporation as well from uh, your uh, water surface surface of the water and these all we collectively call as abstraction losses and some part of the rainfall will infiltrate in the soil through a process called infiltration infiltration and some part of the rainfall would be stored in this depression as depression storage we have already studied in our last class on abstraction losses kindly excuse my handwriting here in this board 
So for a change, we have not, have purposely not chosen PowerPoint presentation because everything does not come as well in a PowerPoint presentation as we want to show it in a board. Like, so there is some uh, slide and whatever you want to tell, there is some, uh, it's not synchronous at many, time, many times. Right, these are, you know, this is an impervious layer as we have already done it. What is impervious layer? When you uh, take a profile of the soil, there will be hard surface where drilling would be very difficult. Underneath this impervious layer, there would be groundwater. Underneath as well as overneath. So this comes under groundwater hydrology. That's a separate subject itself. There are some uh, some other uh, impervious aquifers which we call it perched aquifer. This is a small piece of aquifer or impervious layer which are found above the water table. So there also the infiltration takes place and it is water is accumulated here. And from this perched aquifers, water will flow. This flow is called your interflow or Subsurface runoff. What is this called? This is called an interflow. And this goes and meets any, say this is a river or a uh, water storage. This goes along with the runoff, which is we call it overland flow. These are the overland flow or surface runoff and this surface runoff and this interflow goes and meet and that's why we have a water, a water level, a river runs throughout the year uh, irrespective of rain, rain is falling or not falling. So that is because of interflow. This normally happens simultaneously with the uh, rainfall or runoff process. Then again, part of this is infiltrated, and part of this rainfall, which is infiltrated, and joins the water table. Again, this water table, there is some movement uh, beneath the soil surface through the water table. This water table reaches this river. So the total runoff is a summation of your overland flow, that is the surface runoff your interflow or subsurface runoff and your base flow. So whenever we have to calculate the runoff, especially in hydrograph method, we have to separate this base flow from the total runoff. Because this base flow is not necessarily due to the rainfall. This is because of the flow which is occurring along with the water table. Of course, it is indirectly related because when water rain falls, if infiltration continues and then this groundwater level is raised and this groundwater level is uh, we can see this in this uh, type of rivers or what we call it ephemeral uh, river which runs throughout the year then. Uh, even if there is no rainfall or overland flow or surface runoff, this river flows throughout the year that we call the perennial rainfall and the water that is contributing to this perennial river is the base flow. Right. And if we this consider, this is the ocean. So from a river, excess water will again go and meet the so this is the total uh, process of runoff. So runoff, when we uh, say simply runoff, we mean the total runoff, which is uh, surface runoff or the overland flow plus, you know, uh, you know, sub subsurface or uh, interflow and plus the effect of base flow, which, which water where from where water contributes from the ground groundwater table to any uh, lower depression mainly rivers, that is your base flow. Now the same thing we can uh, 
uh, understand through a flow chart. Now, uh, what we are trying to understand is what is the flow, flow chart. Through a flow chart, we try to understand how this runoff. How do we? What are the different components of hydro hydrological cycle and how the runoff? How runoff? What is the flow process of? Runoff formation of runoff. What are the different kinds of runoff through this flow chart? Say suppose if as an input we have the precipitation. When we have precipitation, first thing, the part of the precipitation will be intercepted, will be intercepted uh, through a process called interception. How do we measure interception? Is there any uh, me measuring equipment for interception? There was one quiz earlier, we have, I have given this quiz. There is something called interceptometer which is installed beneath the canopy of a tree and the total rain that is collected beneath the canopy is measured and compared and subtracted from, subtracted from the uh, water which is collected from the rain gauge. The difference is your, in, in, in your interception. So uh, when interception, if uh, when an interception is there simultaneously there would be evaporation as well as transpiration and for, uh, for simplicity we will write evapo although it is a single entity which necessarily is a, uh, associated with plants but for just understanding purpose this evaporation and transpiration occurring through you know uh, plants as well as on the land surface or the water surface evaporation takes place through plant evapotranspiration takes place so some part is lost as evaporation and evapotranspiration then next is your depression storage Write it again. There is not enough space. This is your interception. Then depression, depression, storage. Then through depression storage also, evaporation takes place. Not evapotranspiration, but evaporation. Then there will be overland flow. Once the condition of depression is fulfilled, then if rain further continues, it will flow as overland flow. And also, some water will be retained in the soil surface, in the top uh, soil. We call it surface retention. What is surface retention? Surface retention is the moisture which is absorbed by the soil and is held held by the soil on the top, uh, the top surface. It's not uh, different. There is a difference between surface retention and infiltration. It's not actually infiltration, but surface retention. From here also you have you know, the evaporation, and from this. There would be another entity which we call it infiltration. Right. So from this depression storage, because part of the water which is which is accumulated on the depressions are evaporated, and some part is 
infiltrated into the soil. So there would be infiltration as well. And this infiltration would be there from surface, uh, your overland flow also, whenever water flows in a channel, there would be some part of it would be evaporated, some part would be, you know, uh, infiltrated. Then again, the infiltration, we have two components. One is groundwater. Some part of the uh, infiltration will go into the groundwater as water table. And some other part of the rest, and some other some part, like in the previous uh, line diagram, we have shown you some first aquifer. It's a small aquifer at isolated places which have the capacity to retain water. It's an impervious line. So in this this we call it first aquifer, first water table. So this is not the actual water table, but water table which is uh, there because of the impervious, small impervious chunk of impervious layer through which water is retained. This is artificial water table and through which we have the interflow, right, interflow or subsurface runoff. Water table interflow. Now this uh, open, uh, through after overland flow, the, uh, the entity that we get is your direct or surface runoff. Now this groundwater, this interflow will contribute to your direct So what is the direct runoff? Direct runoff is surface runoff plus your interflow. So what is interflow? Interflow is that portion of uh, water which is seeped into the uh, soil and held by you know a purge aquifer. That is uh, interf uh, that that water table is your purged water table and the flow happening because of the groundwater topography hydro uh, topography that that flow which reaches any channel or a river that is that we call it as interflow so this direct runoff is interflow plus surface runoff now again this groundwater and direct runoff contribute to channel storage And once channel storage and ultimately we call it the total. So what is the, you may be, uh, there might be some doubt about what is channel storage. If you see in a river, there are some patch when river dry, runs dry, especially in the uh, peak summer months. There would be, it would be dry, the entire river would be dry, but at, at isolated places there would be some water storage. This is such type of thing is called general storage. That rarely happens in, rarely in some arid areas. But the total of this surface runoff and interflow is your direct runoff. Surface runoff plus interflow plus, there is one more in between. Plus this base flow is your total runoff. So what is total runoff? Total runoff is equal to surface runoff which is overland flow plus interflow which occurs through the first aquifer to any and lateral flow towards the river plus your base flow that is very important especially when you have to uh, 
separate the runoff from the paste flow, especially in hydrograph method that we will be dealing later, uh, later part of this course. So this base flow plus interflow, surface runoff, this we call as your total runoff. And what is direct runoff, surface runoff plus interflow, this is your direct So, I, I hope this is clear, go through it, uh, if not once, twice, maybe thrice, but in this, this flowchart, uh, the line diagram that we have described earlier, it's very important to understand this process of runoff, how runoff occurs in the land surface and what are the different runoff, what is base flow, what is interflow, interflow, we also call it subsurface runoff and what is you know, the direct runoff or total runoff. I, I hope this is clear to you. The runoff, total runoff, your direct runoff and your base flow. Now we will be discussing the factors which affect uh, runoff. This is a very, very interesting and a very important thing. Runoff itself, in itself is a subject and it's a very vast subject in this course also around 50% of the course is all about runoff and how to measure runoff we will be dealing with all this not necessarily today but in maybe coming 4 or 5 classes so coming to factors affecting runoff so what are the factors which affect runoff So, these factors affecting the mouth, it can be grouped into two, 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 two categories. One is the climatological factor and the second one is your physiographic factor. Climatological factors and the second is your physiographical As the name suggests, climatological factors may include precipitation, type of precipitation, its intensity, its duration, many things have come. But in this physiographic factor, it's again divided into two parts. One is the watershed characteristics. And second is your channel characteristics. So watershed characteristics would be what would be the shape of the watershed, what would be the size of the watershed, what should be the, how runoff will affect, how runoff is affected by slope, how it is affected by topography, how it is affected by soil motion, antecedent motion condition, soil texture, soil type and also the you know orientation of the watershed. These all comes under the watershed characteristics and broadly physiographic characteristics. And this channel characteristics will deal with your shape of the channel, size of the channel, what is the roughness of the channel bed or the, what is the drainage density. This comes under this channel characteristics of uh, which affect the total runoff or total runoff of any area. We will deal with one by one. First coming to the physiographical uh, climatological factors. This can be again divided as types of precipitation. By type of the precipitation we have already studied in rainfall and its measurement, there are many forms and types of precipitation. It could be snow, it could be hail, it could be rainfall. So how this type of precipitation, how uh, the type of precipitation, whether it is rainfall or snow, affect the total runoff. If we apply some logic, say if there is uh, precipitation occur, occurs in the form of rainfall, that means the run runoff 
the peak runoff would be very immediate runoff would be more and the peak rate of runoff will reach very fast but in case it happens as a snow or a hail the uh, there won't be runoff but at at certain point of time especially uh, this type of thing occurs in himalayan glacier region area where snow falls hails are there so this uh, runoff from such places will occur when the uh, there in the summer months when the snows melt when the heat is raised it will start melting then there would be flow runoff would be there so otherwise normally when it uh, falls uh, it, uh, precipitation occurs as snow it, there won't be runoff because it is held on the soil surface itself such things happen in the himalayan region ladakh and this is northeastern place the place where i have uh, spent many years my schooling was done in the northeastern place there were some uh, perennial rivers normal time there there there, there is no uh, you know the water level in the river is very normal but in the winter season when there uh, into winter or the summer months all of a sudden the water level in the river rises why it rises because uh, somewhere in the catchment area the snow is melting from its catchment area maybe it far off places it melts and come into the river such a type of thing opens happens in brahmaputra river so and and this is very, very dangerous as well because this comes without any warning if there is rainfall the meteorological department will uh, act soon they will give weather warnings but in such type of scenario maybe 20 30 years there was no such alert system so uh, flooding also takes place so people who live in the banks of the river they uh, there is always risk of inundation so type of the uh, what i try, am trying to uh, tell you is type of the precipitation also determine how much and for how long the and at what time the runoff will occur after the precipitation falls second is your intensity of rainfall this term we are very well versed in in the first chapter we have dealt it very thoroughly intensity of the rainfall is the rate at which the rain is falling if intense if rain falls at a very high intensity how is it going to affect runoff if it is falling at a high intensity runoff will be very high and the peak runoff will be reached very soon and if it is if it falls at a lower intensity if it is falling at a intensity lower than the infiltration rate of the soil then there won't be any runoff and also uh, the duration of rainfall here is also important because uh, as we have studied in infiltration the uh, you know infiltration is very high initially in a dry situated uh, unsaturated soil and after some time once the soils are saturated even small amount of rain happening at a lower intensity will produce more runoff if in a dry a dry soil rainfall with high intensity may not that much uh, may not produce that much runoff than in a wet soil with a high in lower intensity lower than lower intensity comparatively lower intensity it will produce more runoff so it depends upon the condition of the fluid as well you know third is the duration of the rain rainfall falling at high uh, intensity and for, for a lower duration may in some places cause high rainfall uh, runoff and if the duration is more but the intensity is less still the soil is saturated because there is not antecedent moisture content then runoff would be high because the infiltration rate or the infiltration capacity what is infiltration capacity we have learned the constant rate at which the water uh, water is taken into the soil that is in infiltration capacity 
So when infiltration is less, whatever rainfall it falls, and over a period of time, over a long duration, it will produce more runoff. We are not talking about rainfall. We have earlier studied about rain, uh, rainfall measurement, duration versus rainfall. It is duration versus runoff. So du duration is also very important. So even uh, small, smaller rainfall with higher duration, if there is antecedent moisture, moisture in the soil, then it will produce more runoff. What is your rainfall distribution? So, uh, rainfall distribution is also very important factor which affect the runoff. In a watershed, watershed I suppose you are uh, familiar with this term, is the uh, entire area from which water flows because of the overland slope and flows from one unit area, the entire area is called a watershed and it's a hydrogeological unit. We call also call it catchment area, drainage basin or simply basin, depending upon the extent of the watershed. So rainfall distribution in any large watershed, there would be different distributions. At some places there would be, because watershed may comprise a few thousand hectares to uh, many square kilometers. Some places there would be, uh, distribution would be, uh, you know, there would be rain, some other places would be rainfall with lower intensity. If some places the rainfall would be at higher intensity. So if the rainfall distribution is not even, then the runoff would not be very great. If it is uniformly distributed, then every point, every point from the watershed will contribute water to the outlet. So if good distribution is there, then the rain runoff would be high. If rainfall distribution is not that good, then runoff would not be that high. So this is also measured by rainfall distribution is maximum rainfall divided by average rainfall of rain. What is rainfall distribution? Or we also uh, term it as distribution coefficient. Like uh, rainfall distribution coefficient, Rd, is the maximum rainfall in watershed, in any part of the watershed, divided by the average rainfall of the entire watershed. So if you have high rainfall distribution or distribution of rainfall, then the runoff will be greater. If the rainfall distribution is not even, then the runoff will be less. And also if there is rainfall in the lower, lower reach of the watershed, distribution is good, rainfall is not there at the higher reach, then the peak runoff will happen very quick. What is peak runoff? The maximum rate at which the runoff Flowing flow uh, runoff flow is called peak rate of runoff. It is uh, measured in cubic meter per uh, discharge per second. Uh, so what I am trying to say is, if at the lower reach, say this is your watershed, say you have rainfall here, and this portion is dry. Again, there is rainfall of smaller intensity here. So if water is happening in the lower reach, then the peak runoff would be very fast. Water will contribute from this and the runoff will happen. If water is happening in this place, the water to reach from this place to the outlet, there will be some time, time there. So the peak will reach very late. Next is your direction of wind. 
it won't have very profound effect but still it has got some effect in in increasing or decreasing the rate of runoff right if uh, wind is occurring along the channel from where the runoff is happening so it will it will you know enhance the rate of runoff and if it is happening in the opposite direction vice versa vice versa if wind is happening in the opposite direction then it will retard the you know uh, rate of runoff this is the effect of wind direction and there are many other factors many other climatological factors especially like interference uh, you know wind speed uh, relative humidity total rainfall because in, uh, runoff is not that much affected by total rainfall of the area then it is affected by the intensity of the rainfall so other factors may include other factors may include you know wind speed relative humidity you know total rainfall uh, you know solar radiation this things in a very small way may affect the rate of runoff or the uh, rate at which the runoff is occurring or the peak rate of runoff but these are the these one of first to three first to three are the main factors main climatological factor which affect the total runoff now coming to the physiographic factors physiographic factors or physiological factors what do we call it this include the hydrological characters or sorry the watershed characters and prominent among them are the size of watershed two watershed having the same rainfall intensity and uh, uh, and same rainfall depth irrespective of its size will produce the same amount of runoff but the difference is if it is a large watershed what will happen is water will contribute from remotest remote places to the outlet if it is small the peak will reach very high the peak rate of runoff although it would be same but the peak rate of runoff will reach very high uh, very fast rather but in a larger watershed water will contribute from has to uh, make contribution from this point this point this point all to the drainage pattern to reach this peak rate of had it been in small watershed the time required for water to reach from this place that is the remotest point of the catchment or the watershed to the outlet this is called your time of concentration so time of concentration is the time required for water to reach from the remotest point to the outlet so here larger watershed which should be wider as well as axially longer and axially axially wider so water water to contribute from all the places it will require time although the total runoff would be more or less it won't differ much now second is your shape of the watershed by shape of the watershed we mean how actually long the watershed is or how exactly wide the watershed is here we define two factors one is form factor and second one is 
compactness factor. So according to this form factor and compactor, compactness, uh, compactness factor, we have defined watershed uh, according to shape is defined as fan shape and furrow shape. Fan shape would be like a beetle leaf. This is a fan shape watershed. Here the axial length and the axial width would be almost same. And in a fern shape watershed, it would be more or less like elongated one. This is a fern shape watershed. Here the axial length, the ratio between the axial length and axial width is would be more than one. That means this, this is not the width along the width and along the length it is not uniform. And in such type of watershed, the fan shape or third shape, fan shape watershed will have a peak runoff rate reaching at a longer duration. The time required for water to reach from the remotest point to the outlet would be high, but the peak runoff will continue for a longer duration. In a fern shaped watershed, what will happen is if rainfall continues after all this abstraction and if, uh, meeting all those uh, losses, if uh, rainfall still continues, water will flow from all this channel. The peak would be not very high, but the peak will reach very soon because water to contribute from other places is not that far off it will start contributing and the peak rate of runoff will stay there for a shorter duration compared to the fan shaped watershed. Now here is where we define two factors. This is form factor. Is Axial width of watershed. This is the axial width divided by the axial length. B by L. Since B is area by L, it will become A by L square. So form factor is area of the total area of the watershed divided by square of its axial length. This is your form factor. There is another factor that we are going to determine which speaks specifically of the shape of the water that is the watershed. This is compactness factor. So how compact your watershed is? So this compactness factor is perimeter of the watershed is all comes under the shape of the watershed which affect the total rainfall. Perimeter of the watershed divided by circumference of a circle whose area is equal to the area of the watershed whose area is equal to the area of So this is your compactness factor. These are some certain terms which is very much associated with watershed as well as runoff and factors which affect runoff. This become sometimes real time becomes as a objective type question sometimes you have to be clear about these things. So this is the, uh, how the shape of the water, water should affect the total runoff of the problem. Now next is 
slope slope is one of the major determining factor which affect the affect the you know the rate of runoff and also the peak rate of runoff how because more the slope naturally will tend to believe that more the slope more will be the you know the runoff or the peak runoff that's fine but how is it more this is your watershed Right. This is your outlet. This is the most remotest point. If the slope is high, the time required for water to come from this point, that is the most remotest point, to the outlet would be less. As a result, the runoff will be very high, as well as the peak rate of runoff will be very high. on the contrary if the slope is less maybe more flatter land the time required for for within the same watershed within the all same condition within the all same maybe run, uh, rainfall intensity rainfall depth all conditions remaining same the time required for water flow from the remotest point to the outlet would be relatively higher so the type of concentration which is the time required for water body to come from the remotest point of the watershed to the outlet of, of the watershed in case of places where the slope is less the time would be more so that way as a result the peak of rate of runoff will also be uh, delayed and the total runoff will also be delayed because of infiltration and many other processes next factor is the orientation of the watershed by orientation of watershed means the direction in which the white watershed is uh, say if it is in north south direction especially in the polar region what will happen if precipitation happens as a snow then the maximum due to higher solar radiation maximum heat will be generated and heat is generated then the glaciers or the snows will melt fast so in such cases if orientation is north west in such cases the runoff will be high peak also will reach quicker and the same way if it is oriented uh say uh in the windward side if watershed is on uh, oriented in the windward side right uh, then what will happen is the uh, there would be maximum if the remote point is uh, oriented in the windward side and the outlet is located in the leeward side what will happen is more rainfall will be happening in the windward side because of you have studied what do you call it orographic effect due to orographic effect at the windward side there would be more rainfall at the leeward side that is the side from where from where the wind blows away there would be less rainfall so orientation is also one of the factor which affect the total runoff now comes many other factors like soil type or soil motion soil type so this soil motion as also also we have already discussed that if soil motion is antecedent soil motion that is if the soil motion is already there in the watershed in the uh, place where the rain is flow uh, happening then what will happen is the whatever rainfall is Uh, falling on the land surface infiltration rate will be less and more amount of direct runoff will be there in such type of watershed and also uh, the type of the soil also determines the uh, peak rate or rate of runoff if the soil type is say sandy sandy type of soil 
what the characteristic of a sandy type of soil is it is coarse and there are more pores if more pore spaces are there more water will be infiltrating in the case of clay soil it is very finer and the pore spaces are less whatever water falls there will be ponding and it would be due to the slope the water will be flown away as a overland flow so coarser the soil less will be the runoff finer the soil more will be the runoff then there are many other factors like you know uh, topography say topography is also one of the physiological factor of the watershed which determines the rate of runoff general convention is that if the land is undulating we may tend to believe that the uh, land would be undulating and terrain type we may tend to believe that you know uh, there would be more runoff but actually it is not like that because if it is undulating it is creating some obstruction to the flow of water so uh, rainfall runoff provided the all others conditions remain same runoff from a milder gen or gently sloping area with flat type of land would be more than an undulating place undulating place there would be undulations and within that undulations there would be obstruction water would be retained there more water retention more de depression storage less would be the total runoff what our purpose is what is more desired we always desired depend upon the condition we desire that runoff should be less and the water more and more water should be seeped in on infiltrated on the soil so these are some of the physiographical effect effect physiographical characteristics of watershed which affect the uh, you know runoff then there are some many other factors within this which affect some of it affects the direct runoff some of it affect the overland overland flow some of it affect the total runoff the difference between total runoff surface runoff and the you know overland flow we have already discussed now coming under this physiographic factor that is there is one more that is the channel characteristics by channel characteristics we we mean that what should be what is the uh, uh, shape size of the channel which is carrying the water runoff water is it parabolic is it trapezoidal and what is the roughness of the bed so uh, the runoff will also this is a very important point roughness of the bed if there in the bed channel bed there are certain grasses vegetation grown then it will obstruct the flow of it will reduce the uh, uh, flow velocity of runoff thereby decreasing the peak rate of runoff more opportunity time will be there for the soil or the for the water to infiltrate into the soil so that comes under channel characteristics this shape roughness of the bed uh, size of the channel and very important factor which i want to tell you is the drainage density this also one of the channel characteristics what is drainage density the drainage density is the total length cumulative length of all the drains seasonal or unseasonal drains which is there in the watershed so the uh, drainage density would be the total length of all this this drain this drain the cumulative length of all the drains if watershed having high drainage density then the rain uh, you know the runoff would be higher and also the peak rate of runoff will reach very fast if uh, watershed having lower drainage density the runoff would be less there is a term drainage density it is the total running length of the channels in watershed divided by the total area 
area of the watershed. So drainage density is this and defined by the total running length of the channel. It's not only one main length, it's the total cumulative length of all the seen or unseen drainage or drainage line in the watershed divided by the total. And what is the effect? More the drainage density ratio, the more will be the your runoff or peak rate of runoff. So these are the factors which affect the total runoff. Total runoff include the you know base flow, interflow, as well as the surface runoff. And these are main factors which affect the runoff. Now then next is how do we measure runoff? Although we won't be going in detail of it in this class. There are many methods and the most popular method measurement of of runoff. One is the rational method. So each method will require one class. Then we have the Cook's method. We have hydrological soil cover complex number method, and popularly we call it the curve number method. And as far as soil, soil and water conservation is concerned, this curve number method is very, very important. Rational method of calculation of or measurement of runoff is important for small watersheds. Then you have hydrographs, and this hydrograph is one of the crux of this hydrologic course. And this hydrograph is used for calculating the measurement of runoff, especially in civil engineering works, design of culvert, design of dam, and many things. Then also we have infiltration indices. Some part of it we have studied earlier by W index, phi index and W index. And there are many, many empirical formulas. These are also empirical, but it's done through some field experiments. These are theoretical based, some formula based, or modification of either rational method or per number method. These are some of the methods of or measurement of runoff, rational Cook's method, the number method, hydrograph, you know, the, the infiltration indices method and the empirical formulas. There are many empirical rational method you might have studied, I don't know. It uh, will be dealing separately on rational method. And empirical methods, there are many empirical methods like, you know, uh, runoff coefficient methods. Then you have uh, uh, Dickens method. You have uh, English method. You have Kosla's method. You have Mayer method. You have there are many methods there like Ali's uh, Sardar and Bahadur method and many so on and so forth. There are many methods. Basically, these empirical methods are modification of either you know rational method or Karnabar method according to the place there where they live in, according to the for a particular place, they change the value of maybe A or B soil factor or climatological factor and they come up with this type of modification for rational or Karnabar's method. Say in for for a place like Jharkhand, if we or may say, say a DK Russia sir comes up with a, some method, it will be called a Russia's method. Like like this, there are many more. 
purpose, what I am trying to say is, according to the climatological places, you know, agroclimatical reasons, many scientists, workers have worked upon it and done, done some modification of either rational method or curve number method and come up with this type of empirical formulas. So on this note, we are going to stop it for today. See you in the next class with rational method of determination of runoff and I hope you uh, you will come prepared with this so that you have got some you will get some basic information about this and the understanding for you would be better thank you